This is the third podcast of a series of five linked podcasts that looks at Nazi economic policy um, 1933 to 39. Um, in the pre- <coughs> previous two podcasts, we've um, first of all looked at Hitler's aims, um, short term and long term, and then in the second podcast, we developed um, Hitler's short term aims, um, which were to which was to um, create jobs for the German people. Um, and uh, the key person who was put on, on uh, at the helm of that was Halmar Schacht, and in particular his new plan um, that he introduced in 1933. And we finished the previous podcast <coughs> saying that basically Schacht had, um, to a large extent, achieved his objective. He had created jobs um, through various work creation projects, but being a traditional economist who um, uh, had no real idea that what Hitler really wanted to do was to prepare Germany for war. Um, he was effectively sidelined and eventually dismissed in the um, mid to late 1930s. So we pick up the story in 1936 um, uh, with what we call the four-year plan, which was the, the next economic plan um, that followed on from the new plan. Okay, so. Um, remember, as we said, there were short-term objectives, um, which were very much about Schacht and the new plan. And those short-term objectives were very public. They were about creating jobs. There was nothing particularly controversial about them. Um, and so the Allies, the British, the French, and the Americans, of course, stood on the sidelines and in, in many ways quite admired what Hitler was doing. Um, he was providing strong leadership. He had crushed communism, which from the viewpoint of the British and the French and the Americans was a good thing as well. Um, uh, the German people were standing behind Hitler. He was creating jobs. He was creating political unity. Um, and by 1936, the country in many ways was a much, much stronger country than it was in 1933 when Hitler came to power. So... What then happened in 1936? Well, 1936, Hitler basically changed his footing. He began to focus much more on his real aims, which to a large extent he had concealed from the German people. Not completely. Um, people He had let slip on a few occasions, um, but on the whole he had avoided talking about his longer-term aims um, because they um, would not really boost his popularity. Hitler was incredibly popular by 1936 because of what he's achieved so far. So just remember, what were those long-term aims? Well, basically, they were about rearming Germany so Germany could eventually, in the early 1940s, fight a war eastwards for living space for the German people, waged particularly for land from Poland and from Russia. So... 1936, the economy is now working strongly. Um, Most Germans have got jobs. Hitler now starts to think the time is ready to start rearming. Okay, to some extent, remember, rearming had already started. Um, There was an overlap with with Schacht's new plan. Um, Do you remember with Schacht's new plan, for example, he was um, a big priority was, for example, building autobahns, well, that's part of rearmament in a sense because they would be the roads that would transport the tanks to the fighting front. Um, draining the swamps, work creation problems like that, um, that's in a sense rearmament because it is um, preparing the ground for the big airfields from which the German Air Force would take off to bomb Poland and Russia. Um, uh, rebuilding factories to make iron ore and coal um, cr- uh, cr- uh, t- which created jobs um, in the period 1933 to 36. Nobody could complain about that. Um, the Allies can't say that's breaking the terms of the Treaty of Versailles just because you're opening coal mines and, and developing coal mines, etc. Um, well, that serves rearmament because the, the, the coal mines and the iron ore factories that are making the iron um, they will ultimately provide the fuel and the metal that will um, for, for the tanks and for the aeroplanes. So, in a sense, what Schacht was doing with the new plan was, without perhaps realising it, he was actually op- preparing the grounds for German rearmament. Okay, so now in 1936, um, Hitler decides, I'm going to put a man in charge um, who I can trust. Schacht, he couldn't trust. Remember, Schacht was, a Na- was not a Nazi. 
Okay, so um, the man you put in charge was Hermann Goering, this man here um, on the right of the slide that you're looking at. Um, Goering was a Nazi, unlike Schacht, um, who was not a Nazi, Goering was a, a, a leading Nazi. Hitler could trust him. Um, remember, if Hitler ever mentioned the topic of we are preparing Germany for war, Schacht would complain and say no, he, he didn't agree with that as a policy. Um, Schacht was basically a peaceful person who believed in trade um, with other countries. Okay, um, Whereas Goering, like Hitler, was completely committed on preparing Germany for war. So the four-year plan, what did, what did it do? Okay, well, again, just learn these points. The first thing it did is it, it aimed to make Germany self-sufficient. Um, now, what does self-sufficient mean? Uh, to, to, to best understand this, think back to World War I. During World War I, which Germany lost, uh, Britain blockaded, okay, and there's a key word. If you uh, blockade, B-L-O-C-K-A-D-E, Okay, is uh, was the the British policy during World War One, and it, they used it successfully as as a as a, as a, str as a means um, to bring what well, to, to defeat Germany. Um, basically, Germany could not grow enough food to feed her own people. Um, so the British policy was: what we'll do, as well as throwing soldiers at the Germans, we will basically try to starve Germany out of the war by shooting down her merchant vessels that were bringing food to Germany on the high seas. Um, and that's what we call blockading, shooting down boats that, bring, that are bringing food to the country. Okay, so effectively Germany had to buy a lot of food from abroad. Um, not just food, other things. Um, she couldn't produce enough, um, for example, enough rubber um, to uh, provide for her for, for, for her vehicles, she couldn't pr um, produce enough um, uh, raw material for clothing, etc. Um, she couldn't produce enough fuel. Um, so uh, Germany had to basically to fight World War One. She had to bring in a lot of stuff. She had to buy a lot of stuff from other countries. Now Hitler said, "Well, if we're going to basically go to war against Poland and Russia, we don't want that to happen again. We don't want." Um, our enemies to be shooting down uh, the boats bringing uh, vital supplies. We need to know that we can provide enough, make enough materials, um, uh, make enough ourselves so that we don't have to bring stuff in by boat. Okay, and that's what self-sufficiency is. Okay, so and, and it is called autarky or an autarkic policy. Okay, so the policy is autarky. Okay, or, or autarkic. Uh, uh, there's a K there, okay, A U T A R K Y. Um, so <coughs> that was um, Goering's first major strand uh, of the four year plan. Um, the second strand, obviously, then is to rearm Germany. The factories need to start making weapons um, so that she can fight that major war. Let's just develop that a little bit further, then, okay. So, what did Goering do? Um, he created huge new industrial works all over the country um, that would make weapons, that would mine coal and iron from the ground and create the metal um, facilities to make the tanks and the aeroplanes. Of course, all of those industries needed workers, so again, it absorbed lots and lots of workers. Many of those workers... Um, Goering was quite unscrupulous. Um, he, he took them from the concentration camps. Remember, at that time, concentration camps were mainly filled with communists and socialists and anti-social types. They were not really used for Jews at that particular time. But man, many of the workers in these new facilities came from concentration camps. The basic plan, as the name, as the name of the plan would suggest, uh, was to, that Germany would be ready for war in four years. So we're talking about 1940. The big aim was that by 1940, Germany would be ready to launch that big invasion eastwards. So huge focus on rearmament and the raw materials of war, okay, such as rubber, oil, steel, cloth, fuel. Now, because Germany couldn't make enough... Um, uh, Traditionally, couldn't produce um, enough materials, essential materials, for herself, and she had to buy a lot in from abroad. Um, what Goering basically said, we have to produce artificial um, raw materials. That's what we call ersatz materials, okay, artificial or synthetic, another word for it, um, synthetic raw materials. 
Um, uh, very expensive to produce, okay, but nevertheless, um, it can be done. The, the, basically, it's, it's making these materials out of other means. Okay, so uh, typical examples of air sats materials um, include artificially produced petrol, rubber, um, uh, which would which, which would be made from coal, um, and so rather than buy in petrol and rubber from foreign countries. Um, basically, you at great cost using for using the, uh, the chemical industry make petrol and rubber using coal. Um, likewise, um, cloth um, make it from pulped wood. It was expensive, an expensive way of doing it, but nevertheless, um, it could be done. Um, so, um, the example I gave in the revision session was, of course, um, Germany couldn't produce enough butter to feed her people. So, what did she do? She developed effectively margarine. Okay, which is artificial synthetic uh, butter. Um, so th those are the sort of main um, strategies um, that uh, were used. Um, it's what we call air sats materials. So make sure you learn that. Okay, so there's um, a few questions. Okay, just again to test your knowledge as before. Um, cover um, or pa pause the video to just. Um, test yourself out, um, make flashcards out of the questions, stick them on your wall. Remember, you've got to keep reviewing these questions from all the previous podcasts uh, if the, the precise information is going to stay in your head. And making flashcards, sticking them on the wall is a really, really good way of doing that. You've done the mind map from the revision sessions. Um, so it's just keeping yourself exposed to this, this, this precise information regularly. Um, and pause, pause the podcast while you do that and then press play and the answers are on the next slide. So there are the answers to those um, brief six questions. That's the end of this podcast. Um, two more linked podcasts that follow on from this, um, which look at um, the German people and how they responded to the um, to these plans, the new plan and the four and the four year plan. So we'll break that into two podcasts. The first will look at the German workers, the, the, the working classes, and the second will look at um, the farmers and the businessmen, and that will um, conclude uh, this topic on the Nazi economic policy. Thank you.